So let's um, worship God and let's sing hymn 196. Come, now is the time to worship. Let's start to sing. adoration and confession. Let's pray. Loving and heavenly God, you are the creator of both heaven and earth. This day as are all days, this moment as are all moments, is the time to worship you and to give you praise. Open our eyes to the glory of your presence. Attune our ears that we may hear your voice. Expose our minds to the challenge of your truth. And fill our lives with wonder, love and praise, we pray. God of mercy and grace, you know all our faults and our failings. The ones that can be seen by others and also the ones that we, we hide, sometimes not too well. We can often be harsh in judging others, but blind to our own faults. We can be quick to look for praise and recognition for what we do, but equally we can be slow to acknowledge the work and energies and efforts of others. And so often we remain silent rather than speaking words of encouragement to our fellow human beings. So loving God, we come to you with our personal confessions and as we hope to be forgiven, the Lord teach us also to forgive. 
So hear now in the quiet our own private and personal confessions. Help us, God, by our deeds and actions to show love for one another. These prayers we make in the name of your Son, our Saviour and our Guide, Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a puckle of young folk in. Puckle's a good word. I like the word puckle. Yeah, there they are there. I'm going to play you something about, you're going to go out and be halfway through the service, but I wanted you to hear this song. There are lots of songs that I learned when I was in Sunday school. And this is a modern version of one of these. That's it working. Mm -hmm. Listen carefully to the words of this song. And the older folk, if you recognize it, put your hands up. Left in text, a greedy little man was he. Less and less for all the rest, more and more for me. One day crowds grew in Jericho, for Jesus was in town. And Zacchaeus thought, now then, let's see. I think Jesus would like to meet. A man as rich as me, as filthy rich as me. As a Zacchaeus was a very little man, a very little man was he. He climbed up into a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Saviour passed that way, he looked into that tree. And he said, Hello there. Now Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house for tea. I'm going to your house for tea. that story about? Anybody know? Did you all want to hear it? So what was it about? Zacchaeus. Hands up if you know the story of Zacchaeus. I remember the Sunday school. One of the lines in there is about Zacchaeus. Being a hated person. Do you hate anybody? Come on, be honest. <laughs> okay, is there anybody that maybe you don't hate, but you're not very sure? Hands up if there's people that you think are not very sure that I'm about. Not everybody has their hands up there. 
And that's quite surprising, really. Because I think if we were honest with ourselves, there are people that would rather kind of not have very much to do with. And it's interesting that in that song, the Lord says, it's the loss I've come to see. It's the loss I've come to see. What do you think that means? Who do you think is being referred to? Who are the lost? Because we're the only disciples that he has now. So we need to remember to do that. Let's sing hymn 356 and at the end of this some of the young people I think will go out there.
Today's reading is from Psalm 145, verses 1 to 7. I will exalt you, my God, who came. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and exalt your name forever and ever. Praise the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can follow. One generation will they command your work to another. They will tell the mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They will liberate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing to your righteousness. The second reading is from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was chief tax collector and wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not. He got to the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a signal fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately, I must stay in your house today. So he came down once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this began to mutter, he was going to be a guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I will give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because of this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. Okay. Thank you, Sandra. Sandra is the president of the Guild here at St. James. And today we are going to be rededicating the members of the three guilds who are with us today. The guild's work is phenomenal. You only need to look on, look on the internet and put in women's guild, or not women's guild, sorry. Gosh, nearly got into trouble there, didn't I? <laughs> put in the guild and you'll see the kind of work that the guild does. And the guild is out there doing God's work week in, week out. And for that, we give all of you our sincere thanks. So let's sing now the song that I link to the guild, because it's no longer the women's guild. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let's be upstanding.
Let's pray. God, open our ears and our eyes and our hearts to hear your word. Because we need to be constantly reminded of your word and what you would have us do in our lives. So be with us as we think that through. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus and the wee little man. It's got a real Scottish connotation that, hasn't it? There's lots of stories in the Bible, but the keyest one is possibly the one that I always think about if somebody says to me, what bit of the Bible reminds you of Scotland? I can't help but go back to my Sunday school days and that song, Zagreus was a wee little man. The word we is fantastic. Some of the stories about the events of Jesus' life and teaching are easy to understand and applaud and the challenge for us only arise when we take the next step and ask ourselves how the stories and teachings ought to affect how we live our lives in our modern world. And I think that's certainly the case in today's story. Simple story really. You probably think more about Zacchaeus up the tree and being a wee man than think behind it and what the meaning of the story is. But a simple story. But when you think about applying what comes after the fact that you know he's up a tree, there's a very big bit of humour in there as well. And when you think about applying it to your own life, well, potentially, Maybe it should become almost life-changing. The story of Jesus meeting with Zacchaeus is one of the best known and possibly also one of the best loved in the Gospels. And most of us remember that wee little man who came to see Jesus pass by when he visited Jericho. Sandra told me that Robin Smith's relatives lived in Jericho. The one by far, for she said, you know the one in the Middle East. <laughs> However, back to the story. If we're honest, maybe the part of the story that we prefer to kind of just put to the background a bit is to ignore how we as the followers of Jesus might be inspired to make our own connection with those rejected by society. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Well, actually, the chief tax collector. So the option for Zacchaeus to be mingling with the crowd to get closer to Jesus, if for no other reason than that, was a non-starter. And according to the story, he was unable to see Jesus over the crowd because of his lack of height. But regardless of his arithmetical height, Zacchaeus was looked down upon in every other possible way. You see, tax collectors at that time were seen as collaborators and that they served the Roman invaders. And as a good number were also known to skim something off the top for themselves, the high likelihood is that Zacchaeus would have been greatly distrusted by the Jewish community. And that distrust was probably all the greater because in a Jewish society, somebody who handled money on behalf of unbelievers was also technically unclean in a religious sense. You have to remember that Jericho was a prosperous centre of balsam trade. So it's also likely that Zacchaeus would have had ample opportunity to make himself a very pretty penny indeed from fleecing the rich merchants. 
which of course is not a good recipe for getting themselves liked by those who were well less off. So whether it was because he was wee or because the rest of the crowd would have made sure he didn't get near to Jesus, Zacchaeus climbs the sycamore tree to see Jesus. And no doubt, to everyone's surprise, Jesus not only takes notice of him up there in the tree, but he addresses him by his own name and then invites himself to Zacchaeus' place for a meal. And Zacchaeus, apparently overcome with Jesus' accepting attitude, at least says he's sufficiently sorry about all the cheating that he's done, that he not only promises to repay those who cheated, but to give them back more, four times more than he had taken. Although we can readily see the compassionate wisdom shown by Jesus in this story, less obvious is the contrast with what most of us might have done in similar circumstances. If we're honest about it, people like Zacchaeus, you all know who they might be in our own time, are typically shunned. When we spot someone in the street or in a crowd who is normally rejected by decent society, the natural, the natural expectation would be to ignore them, to show them no recognition or acceptance. But that's not Jesus' attitude. And did you notice that Jesus seemed to know Zacchaeus' name? Again, beggars and other forms of society rejects don't normally attract our personal consideration to the extent of us finding out and talking to them by name. And how likely is it that we might not only show ourselves to be sufficiently generous to stop to talk to somebody of our, unworthy of our trust, but to go even further and offer to go to their house to dine with them. So if you put yourself in Zacchaeus' shoes, then maybe we can see why this recognition and acceptance by Jesus might have made such an impression on him. And with a little further reflection, we can also probably see that these actions, if you think about it, were entirely consistent with the message, the messages that Jesus represented. So the question then becomes how can we represent this same message to other people? You see, simply retelling the story, well that's not enough. Talking about it or reading about it to others doesn't help either. Particularly if others see us, the self-appointed messengers of the one who reached out to the pariahs of society, rather as the sort of people who themselves prefer to join the crowd and shun the pariahs of society. If you do something like that, then you might be not surprised if others might accuse us as being somewhat hypocritical. I suppose it's unrealistic to assume that we might ever reach a degree of perfection in our attitudes to the less fortunate. Nevertheless, if our sense of direction is so muddled that we are uncertain of what values that we are attempting to stand for, then it might be time for us to have a good look at ourselves. And if our faith has anything at all to do with the world in which we live, our attitudes to others, including to the often unlovable, that might be a decent place to start. Fortunately, although it's easy to find many examples of where we are reluctant to call the pariahs down from their metaphorical sycamore trees, I can also think of those among us who do care enough to offer a degree of friendship and acceptance. There are some among us who are the epitome of acceptance and who win the right to be the messengers of Jesus by the living of his message. So we should be grateful that not all servants of the church are focused on personal advancement or respectability. I said earlier that we're going back to Rome. 
And as a non-Catholic looking at the present Pope, Pope Francis, what I see is a humble man who truly attempts to live the gospel that he's encountered. I'm not sure that I can say the same consistency in all other religious leaders, or more to the point that were, if I were backed into a corner, nor can I claim with any certainty that others would come close to seeing that same consistency in myself. I wonder what people would say about me in that regard. A great theologian, Carol Menninger, reminds us that the first step in redemption is to first acknowledge what some would call our sins. But again, that's not enough. Having acknowledged our weaknesses, just as Zacchaeus showed by his actions, the next is to make the first tentative step towards restorative justice. And if we could step back a little to reflect on how we individually reach out to whomever our church and society appears to treat as pariahs, perhaps we might be in a better position to acknowledge that just like the wee man, Zacchaeus, all of us too might need some acts of redemption. It's not easy. It's hard. It's easy to listen to the stories and to laugh at my wee jokes. It's easy for me to crack the wee jokes. It's much harder to be Christ's disciples out there. May God bless us all in our efforts to do just that. Let's listen to a short reflective piece. Bind us together, Lord. member of the guild and you're able would you please stand for the rededication of you and the guild if you get tired as I'm speaking have a wee rest and have a wee seat don't feel bad about that whose we are and whom we serve the guild is a very special part of the body of Jesus Christ and you have every right to feel privileged to be part of this movement. You can feel proud too because you are recognized as a valued action group within the National Church. And many people regularly pay tribute to what you have managed to achieve in the name of your Lord Jesus Christ. At a local level, 
We are grateful and blessed that you share fellowship within our churches and communities and your members and friends all look forward to your meetings. So may God's blessings be with all of you. Let's all repeat, even those who are not members of the guild, the statement of Christian faith. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. God is love. We praise God the Father who created the universe and keeps it in being. He has made us his sons and daughters to share his joy, living together in justice and peace, caring for his world and for each other. We proclaim Jesus Christ, God the Son, born of Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became one of us, sharing our life and our death. He made known God's compassion and mercy, giving hope and declaring forgiveness of sin, offering healing and wholeness to all. By his death on the cross and by his resurrection, he has triumphed over evil. Jesus is Lord of life and of all creation. We trust God, the Holy Spirit, who unites us to Christ and gives life to the church, who brings us to repentance and assures us of forgiveness. The Spirit guides us in our understanding of the Bible, renews us in the sacraments, and calls us to serve God in the world. We rejoice in the gift of eternal life. We have sure and certain hope of resurrection through Christ, and we look for his coming again to judge the world. Then all things will be made new, and creation will rejoice in worshipping the Father through the Son and the power of Spirit, one God, blessed forever. Amen. Let's pray. We offer the gifts and talents that you've given us, the skills that we've acquired, God. We offer our whole lives in your service. Help us to forget ourselves, but never to forget you, so that all we do is done for you in your name. Save us from self-pity, but give us true compassion for others. Help us to love one another as you love us. Stop us from being egotistical and instill in us the desire to listen to you, to follow you. Keep us from being obstinate, but make us always keen to do your will, to accept the tasks, the challenges which present themselves to us. And that we pray that we will always remember our motto. Help us to live by it. Whose we are and whom we serve. Amen. It'll have been a difficult couple of years for the girls. You'll all get together again now or soon. This week I think there's something called Desert Island Discs on. And apparently you're going to hear what I would take with me on my Desert Island Discs. So if you want to know, you need to come along. <laughs> Let's continue our worship of God as we have our prayer for other people. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly God, thank you for the infinite number of ways in which you show your love for us, for the beauty of your creation, for the first flowers in springtime, for the warmth of summer sunshine, the mellow fruit fruitfulness of the spotted harvests, the crisp clarity of winter days, for the joy of family and friends, the shared laughter, the happy memories, the comfort we receive in times of sorrow and sadness, for the fellowship we find within the Guild and our Church, for the challenges which are presented to us, for the fun that we have working together, working to serve you. Most of all, though, God, we thank you for sending your Son to live here with us. Jesus lived a perfect life a life without blemish. 
yet he understands our human faults and failings because he grew with us. In obedience he went to the cross that we might know forgiveness. He rose again on the third day that we might have eternal life. So God, thank you for your limitless love. We lay before you now, Lord, the concerns for others and our concerns for the world. We pray for your church here in Scotland and throughout the world. A church going through change. Help us to see a future where growth and mission and outreach are the watchwords. We pray for harmony amongst all who follow the way of Jesus Christ for denominational barriers to be swept away. We ask your bread blessing on all organizations within the church. And particularly today we remember the guild. Guide and inspire all who plan for the future. We pray for the leaders of our nations, our communities, industry and the caring services. And we ask that each of us will use, each of them will use their influence wisely and with compassion so that they do things that are acceptable to you. We offer our prayers for peace throughout our world, for an epidemic of love to sweep through our nations. We pray for all who are ill, for those who know physical pain, for those who know and suffer mental torment. We pray for the bereaved, those trying to rebuild their lives after the loss of one from whom they care dearly. Heavenly God, there are so many who have secret sorrows and anxieties which they feel they can't share with others. May all who are weary and burdened with a load of care find comfort in the knowledge that you know their worries and that you are always there with them. And so now in the quiet, God, we bring to you the individuals that we know and we come across in our daily lives who are having it hard right now. And so we bring them to you in the quiet. Hear our prayers for other people. Loving God, all these prayers we bring to you in the name of your Son and our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who taught us our family prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand and sing our closing hymn, hymn 159, Lord for the Years. Let's stand.
and be Christ's disciples. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you, now and forevermore.